go. Good morning, good afternoon, young professionals. We just went over that and like I forgot that it's <laughs> afternoon. That's how my brain is working today. Hi, I'm Nicole. I am part of the leadership team here at Young Professionals, and I am just so glad that you are all here today. We're a group of 20s and 30s kind of experiencing life together, loving Jesus together, growing and experiencing life together. So we are happy to have every face in this room today. Welcome, welcome. Um, if you are new, welcome. Congratulations for coming. We are happy to have you. And if you are new today, we'd love for you to fill out one of um, these welcome cards that are on the table. Just we'd like to get to know you a little bit um, more and help you to get plugged in. Um, we have volunteering opportunities, life groups through the week, um, different fun things going on. So fill out one of those cards and then come find somebody with a lanyard and we'll make sure to get you plugged into the right places. All right, we have a couple of extra Bible studies that go on throughout the month. So this coming Friday, we have men's Bible study or the brotherhood, I guess it's kind of sometimes referred to. So this Friday, I believe it's 7 to 8.30. All the details can be found on our Facebook page, Instagram page. Make sure you mark yourself as going, guys, um, and it'll be a good time. And we don't want to leave out the girls. So we have sisterhood coming up at the end of the month on Saturday the 27th from 6 to 9 I believe all the details for that also can be found on our Facebook page Instagram all of our social media so make sure to check that out it is a potluck so make sure to bring some food for it and share because um, food is very important if you guys don't know me very well it's my love language for sure which is not a true thing real thing but um Food's important. Bring some good food for the potluck for sisterhood and enjoy some time with all the girls. Um, also a quick announcement, we have recycling over on the side. If you can, try to recycle anything that you're able to, but please don't put stuff that's non-recyclable in there. We're getting a lot of, I guess, straws and snack wrappers and styrofoam in there, so make sure to throw that in the trash. But please use our recycling if possible. Um, and we want you to stay connected to us. We are active on social media, as I think most of the world is right now. So find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on all those cool social media platforms. We have a really awesome meetup page on Facebook. If you search young Pro CS Young Professionals 20s and 30s, you'll find it. There's cool things going on there. There are um, non-young professional sponsored events, um, not official ones, but just people like wanting to go to a movie together, or go on a hike, or grab coffee, or do other cool things, just living life together. So make sure you check that out and um, stay connected with us. And finally, we are a community that believes strongly in prayer. We love big, ridiculous prayers, and as many as we can get as possible. Um, so if you have a prayer request, we have some prayer request cards on your tables. Make sure, or feel free to fill them out. We have a little box over there on our snack table. Um, you can put your prayer request in there or find any of us with a lanyard, and we can pray for you right there, then and there, or we can save it to pray for you later. So we definitely believe in prayer. And speaking of that, I would like to pray us in before we get started. So if everyone could bow their heads, close their eyes. Father God, thank you for this beautiful Sunday, and thank you for every beautiful person in this room. Thank you for bringing them in here, giving them the courage to come here. Um, Lord, I pray for Laura's message today. Just give her the right words to speak. Um, relieve her of all her nerves, and just speak through her to all of us today. I know that there are important things that we are here to learn and grow from. Um, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's give it up for Laura. All right, guys. How are you? Good. If you know me, you know that when I ask you, how are y'all feeling today, what do you say? Powerful. Powerful. How are you guys feeling today? Powerful. Good, good, good. Happy Sunday. Um, if you don't know me yet, my name is Laura. Um, I have had the privilege and the honor of serving alongside this community for three years now. Um, we're going on four years, y'all. It's going to be like in August now. I'm just so excited. This community has just transformed my life. If this is your first time here, um, I encourage you to come back and come back and come back again and get plugged in because this community truly has the opportunity to change your life. Um, and if you're new here, we will also, just like a little run through of what we'll be doing, um, we're gonna have like a short message, we're gonna have some table discussions that we'll do as a group together, and then we'll wrap up. So 
just a little heads up there so you're not thrown off with like, oh my gosh, I'm in a little mini kind of Bible study. So, um, But happy Sunday, it's Palm Sunday, which is awesome because we're entering into Holy Week and I'm super excited because let me tell you guys, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is super funny, this is just weird, but this is the first time I've ever like taken a part of like Lent. I, I didn't like grow up like in the Catholic Church or whatever, I thought it was just for Catholics, but um, it's not, and so you can like give up something to, you know, relate to Jesus, relatable, right? Relate to Jesus and how he went into the wilderness for 40 days, and um, so I gave up coffee, and it's been so hard, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, this is something tiny to give up, but it was big for me because I have not been drinking coffee at all. I was drinking three to four cups of coffee a day. Um, and now, like, on Sundays, I'm like, oh, I just need, like, half a cup and I get really jittery. So um, I'm excited. We're entering into Holy Week. It's Palm Sunday. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a few, like, these past few weeks have been so interesting for me because I feel like I truly have been in the wilderness. I've been um, tested in so many different ways. Um, just different trials have come up over the past few weeks, but God is good. He's so good. Y'all, like, I've seen him show up three times in my life, three times in my life over the past, or in my life, over the past few uh, weeks, I'm sorry. Um, he's shown up three times over the past few weeks to my friends, and I know that that's God. I know that's God because um, just a couple weeks ago, it was a Friday night, I went to dinner with my friend and, and she blessed me with these beautiful bracelets that just reminded me of how awesome God is and um, that, that I am a warrior and that he is El Roy and that I can breathe. Um, and so that happened and then uh, my Wednesday night life group bl blessed me with this amazing um, just frame of, of thank you and pictures and just reminded me of how loved I am. Um, and then, um, this past Friday, I met up with my friend, and she made me this beautiful, beautiful piece because um, she's an artist, and she painted, like, sunset colors, which I love. And if you guys know my puzzle piece story, she, like, gifted me with this puzzle piece, like, um, just, like, frame thing. Oh, I'll show you guys a picture n next time. Or if you want to come chat with me afterwards, I'll, I'd love to show it to you. But that's just how God is. Like, he's so good, and he works through our friends, and he works through events, and he's just, you know, in the midst of our trials or whatever we're going through, like, he's there. Um, so... Yeah, just a little nugget of me. Um, but we are in week three of our uh, Relatable series and uh, learning how to make relationships work. And um, I have to say that I'm, I'm super excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today because I truly feel like God left this week open just for me. And I say that because I can relate to today's topic so much. Relatable, right? Haha. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh. That's a little joke. But uh, <laughs> I love that this series is all about how embracing God's love, right, and, and receiving his grace, it changes the way we relate to him, the way we relate to him, our family, our friends, and ourselves. Um, so before I start, I just want to share a quick recap of the past two weeks of what we've been covering um, for any of you that haven't been here before um, the past two weeks or whatnot. But if, those, if you missed it, week one, Michelle shared a beautiful illustration of the shovel and the spoon, right? And how God dispenses grace and mercy upon us with a shovel and not a spoon, right? How awesome is that? And the same way Jesus bestowed himself upon us, he came from heaven to earth into time and space. So we now have the ability to relate to him in the same way and dispense grace and mercy to others abundantly. Amen. Last week, Seth's hilarious message, right, of filters, um, he covered the man, woman, and the mirror, which was about seeing ourselves and loving ourselves as God sees us and loves us, right, in truth, unfiltered and absolute with hashtag no filter, right? Um, so this week may or may not be as fun. It's about to get a little heavy and a little real. So buckle up. Um, <laughs> so if you guys don't know, this room is a safe place for us, right? This is a safe place for us to be honest with each other, to be vulnerable, and um, just to get real. So I have, I have a question I wanna ask you guys. Who in this room can say, I have daddy issues? <laughs> two hands up, right? I have daddy issues, right? And if you don't want to raise your hand, that's totally okay. Thank you for those of you that did. That's, it, it can be hard. Um, but I think in some form, some way or another, we all have daddy issues, right? Um, and there may be some of you that don't or don't even know what those are. You're like, what? This is not for me. Absolutely not. But hopefully this message today is for someone that you may know. For me, daddy issues, um, what it means to me is 
what I've dealt with in my past is uh, feelings of neglect, abandonment, rejection, right? Feelings of, of being unworthy of love, um, feeling like I had to jump from relationship to relationship, having mainly guy friends maybe for you guys, maybe having being surrounded by girlfriends, um, treating, treating men differently because of the lack of relationship that I had with my father, right? Daddy issues for me equaled Jesus trust issues. Overall, I just had a really, really hard time, y'all, relating to God as my father, as the God and the father that loves me. Again, your daddy issues, female or male, may look a little different for you. And here's another question for y'all. What is, and you guys can shout out your, your favorite names, what is one of your favorite names for God? El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Okay. Yahweh. Yahweh. What? Somebody say? Father. Father. Ooh. Anybody else? The great I am. I like that. Alpha and Omega. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, you're just shouting out, shouting out. Keep shouting them. What? Adonai. Adonai? Adonai. I don't think I've heard of that one. Okay. Somebody say something over here. Abba. Abba, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So for me, over the past few years, some of my favorites are Jesus, of course. Like, Jesus, I love you. I need your help. <laughs> right? Um, Prince of Peace, um, my almighty king, Yahweh, is one of my favorites. Recently, it's been El Roy, the God who hears and the God who sees me, and Abba, right? Abba meaning Father, Papa. Um, so the first voices we hear, the first voices we hear are our parents, Right? and maybe the doctor too. But the first voices we hear are our parents. In a perfect world, it's both mom and dad that you hear, right? But for me, it was just mom. It was just mom. I grew up with a single mom, two beautiful sisters, um, in a tiny two-bedroom apartment where I shared a room with my sisters. <laughs> um, but I grew up with a single mom, and um, I can remember you guys uh, having a family night one night. <laughs> We're watching this Lifetime movie, okay? Just picture it. We're watching this Lifetime movie, you know, picture-perfect family, like a picture-perfect house, and, like, we're sitting there watching, like, a movie together, and um, this picture-perfect family just, like, starts to creep under my skin, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know? And I start to get super emotional, and I get, like, mad at my mom, and I'm like, well, like, why is she not, like, how come she didn't get remarried? Like, how come I don't have a father in my life? Like, where's my picture perfect family? Where's, where's this per perfect house? Like, where's all of this in my life? How come I don't have this? And I got so mad at my mom and I started crying and she's like, why are you crying? I'm like, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. And I ran to my room, my room that I shared with my sisters. Um, and I ran in my room and I shut the door and my mom's just like knocking on the door and she's like, let me in, like, let me talk to you. Like, why are you crying? I'm so sorry that you don't have a dad in your life. I'm so sorry that I can't give you what you're looking for. I'm so sorry. And, I'm, and I like still like years later, I remember this, right? And I just felt so bad. I felt so bad. Um, I also looked for family in my friend's parents too. So. All the time I would ask my mom, like, mom, let me go hang out with my friends, right? Let me go hang out at my friend's house because my friend's parents were, like, married and they had this picture-perfect Lifetime movie, you know, scenario. And I'm like, let me go hang out at my friend Sarah's house. Let me go hang out, hang out at this, you know, this girl's house, whatever. Whoever, like, of my friends that had married parents, I wanted to be at their house because, like, they had family dinners and they were just having fun, you know, doing, having game nights, whatever it was. Um, and I remember my mom being so opposed to that, like, no, no, I don't want you to go over to their house. I don't want you to stay the night at their house. I don't want you to, you know, like, she was just so worried. She was a warrior. Now she's a prayer warrior. Um, but <laughs> um, I remember one night, she finally let me stay the night at my friend's house. She finally let me stay the night at my friend's house, and I was so excited, and I was like, yeah, sleepover. Um, but that night, unfortunately, I got sexually abused by my friend's father. Right, so with all of that, my picture of dad, father, papa, right, my Abba, was certainly tainted. And for you, it might look a little different. Maybe you don't have your mom in your life, right? Maybe you, you don't have either parent in your life. Maybe you were raised by a grandma or uncle. Um, and maybe you have both of your parents in your life, but it's just really complicated, right? 
Let me give some credit to the awesome dads out there real quick though. Who in this room can say they have an amazing dad? Look at that, that is so good, that's so awesome, right? You guys have an amazing dad. Um, give it up for them, clap for your daddies, right? Um, I think of Mauto, my brother-in-law, he's an amazing father, like he works hard for the family, he prays over his children, he disciplines his children, he's a, he's a good husband, um, he's just, he's an amazing dad. I think of him like, God, like, if I had a dad like that in my life, ooh, I would have walked straight, <laughs> real straight. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think of Katie. Katie's not here, it's her birthday. That's probably why she's not here. I think of Katie, she has an amazing father. Um, I, I see her just like give credit to him so many times. I think of Aaron, is Aaron in the room now? Um, Aaron has an amazing father. I see her have like date nights with her dad even now, like in her 30s, she like has date nights with her dad, right? It's just so cool to see. Um, but I love that, I love that so much. Um, but some of us can't even think about our dad that way, right? Some of us in this room, it's a struggle, either because he was absent like mine through divorce, um, or maybe it's through death, maybe distance, busyness, abuse, or he's present, but he's emotionally or verbally damaging. Again, daddy issues can equal Jesus trust issues. And so this series is based off of Louis Giglio, and um, if you're in a life group, plug there. Uh, Louis Giglio says it like this. He says, a lot of us are looking through a, a cracked glass, and that's how we see God, right, through our own father. The enemy knows that God is a perfect father, a heavenly father, but the gospel is powerful enough to reconcile us to God, to ourselves, and to bring healing into our relationship with our parents. Let me say that again. The gospel is powerful enough to reconcile us to God, to ourselves, and to bring healing into our relationships with our parents. Amen? Amen. And that's a keynote. It's on your discussion sheets if you guys didn't write it down or want to remember it. So today we're going to talk about four points of how this is done, how the gospel can be so powerful enough to reconcile us to our parents. Okay? So um, before I go into point number one, open up your Bibles or get out your phones to 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to pull Pastor Lynn here. You're going to go to the back of your Bible or scroll all the way down to Revelation and flip back a couple of books over and you'll see 1 John, New Testament. 1 John chapter 3, 1 through 3, says this. And I'm going to read the message version just because I, I was reading the different translations and I really like this one. It says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Because, because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him. And in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. So for me, I underlined, we're called children of God. That's who we really are, right? We, me and you, we're called children of God. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. Amen? Amen. So when you come to know Jesus, point number one, when you come to know Jesus, you get a new identity, a new identity. Our God Almighty becomes our father when we are born into a new relationship with him. He becomes our father. So when you're, when you're born, when you accept Jesus into your life, right, you, you, you get this new identity. You, you become something, right? You become something. You become a Christian. You become um, a new creation, right? We all become something, once we choose to take that step in accepting Jesus into our life. And your new identity is in God, our Father. So now we can say we are daughters of the King, right? We are sons of the King. Um, a sheep to our shepherd or a lamb. Do you say a sheep or a lamb? A sheep? A lamb. Whatever. Um, we, we hear his voice and we follow him, right? Um, I was at a conference this past week, and uh, the pastor was talking about how his grandfather... Um, his grandfather was a shepherd, and his grandfather would try to gather all of his all of his sheep, right, to to come and like 
gather him and, and ga gather them and, and have them follow him. And there's always this one, right? Always the one that would try to get away and would not like go and follow their father, the shepherd, right? Um, and this one little lamb would always get away and run away and just like be prey to the enemy and just be alone and isolated and always run away. And the shepherd would go and get him, carry him and bring him back. Each time he went away, the shepherd would go and get him and bring him back. Until maybe the third or fourth time, the shepherd like, you know what, like this little lamb, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to do something. So he'd pull out his like iron rod or whatever and break the lamb's leg. Break the lamb's leg, right? And carry him, bring him back into the flock. And that little lamb would have to find and navigate itself into the middle of the herd so that way it could lean on and walk with the rest of him. So now that little lamb has this new identity as a, as a, as a lamb to that shepherd, right? A sheep to the shepherd, because he now knows that I have to follow that voice. I hear the voice, and I'm going to lean on my community, lean on these other lambs to follow my shepherd and become something new, right? Sometimes we have to be broken in order to get that new creation, that new identity in our lives. Amen? Point number two, you don't have to be afraid about thinking of God as your father. You don't have to be afraid about thinking of God as your father. Now, I know a lot of us don't want that idea because you fill in the blank, right? I can, I can think about my own story and how my tainted view um, just messes that up, right? I was afraid to think of God as my father. My sister, on the other hand, she looked at God as her father right away because she's like, well, I didn't have a father in my life. Like, he's my father. I know I can go to him. For me, it took a longer time. And one of my dear friends gave me this handout, and that's just another way that God works. But God works in acknowledging the truth about your father, God. Right? We can look at God as distant and disinterested. We can look at him as insensitive and uncaring. We can look at him as stern and demanding, passive and cold, absent or too busy for me, impatient, angry, rejecting, mean, cruel, or abusive, trying to take all the fun out of life, controlling or manipulative, condemning or unforgiving, or a nitpicking, demanding perfectionist, right? We can see God that way. But Deuteronomy 31, 6, 8 says he will never leave us or forsake us, right? And we can choose to believe that this is the truth about our Father God, that he is intimate and involved. He is kind and compassionate, accepting and filled with joy and love, warm and affectionate, always with me and eager to be with me, patient and slow to anger, loving, gentle, unprotective, trustworthy and wants to give me a full life, full of grace and mercy, tenderhearted and forgiving. His arms are always open, just like the prodigal son, right? Committed to be my growth, to be committed to my growth and proud of me as his beloved child. That's how we can choose to believe the truth of our father. And here's what's so powerful about that, y'all, that we don't have to be afraid about thinking of God as our father because God is not the reflection. He's not the reflection of our earthly dad. Our God is the perfection of our earthly dad, not the reflection, right? The perfection. He is not just a bigger version. He is the version we are all longing for. Amen? And Louis Giglio said that, so don't give me credit for that. <laughs> um, but it's good. It's so powerful. I love that. He's a version that we're truly all longing for. Point number three, we can either reinforce what's been broken in our lives, or we can be a part of reversing the curse. And this one's a good one. This one's so good, right? We can either reinforce what's been broken in our lives, or we can be a part of reversing the curse. We have a choice in this one, right? We have a choice in this one. We can choose to lean on the deficit or the negatives of what's happened, right? I didn't have a dad in my life, so I'm going to behave this way. Or I'm always, or I'm always just going to say, like, this is how hard it was for me as a child growing up. I didn't have my dad in my life, so I'm going to react this way in my high school or college days, right? Or jump from relationship to relationship. Or I can, I can 
choose to lean on, you know, my heart being crushed after every breakup and like deal with rejection and, and neglect and abandonment again and again and again, right? Um, or I can lean on, you know, I was a victim of this for my friend's dad. And, you know, I can lean on all the deficit, the negatives that happened in my life, or I can know that Jesus came to reverse the law, right? And I can lean on the power of God in me. And he's in you, right? And because of this, there's a possibility of reversing the curse in our own lives. We talked about this in True Spirituality at the beginning of the year about Romans 12. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And for me, this was super powerful because this allowed me to renew my mind, to surrender these parts of my life, of my past, that I knew that I um, was reflecting on and, and leaning on the, the negatives of what was ha had happened to me in my past. And I knew that because of this, by being transformed by the renewing of my mind, I can surrender this broken area of my life to God. And so can you, right? So let's choose to reverse the curse and not live in our brokenness. Let's allow our God to heal us and set us free because he's a God of deliverance, right? He can set us free in our hearts and our minds, and we can break free from fear, from our past chains, and from all shame. Because God is for us. He's not against us. Amen? He gives us the authority because of his spirit in us. He gives us the authority to go into our dark places and bring light into them. He gives us the authority to go into those crooked areas and make them straight. And because of the authority lies within us, we can know that we are sons and daughters of God our Father. So don't allow your circumstances to keep you where you are. Change the atmosphere and reverse the curse. And maybe you can take steps like counseling, seeking a counselor, right? Celebrate recovery. I've heard is awesome at Sun Valley. Woo! Um, being discipled or mentored by someone who's been on a similar journey as you. You know, maybe all of those, maybe one of those, maybe just sharing your story, sharing a testimony of what you've been through, the struggles that you've been through. But take a step in reversing the curse and don't sit in those circumstances. Amen. Number four, the power of the gospel is that we can be the reflection of the love of God to our parents. Ooh, this one gets me excited. We can be the reflection of the love of God to our parents. We can show the world the gospel and how powerful it is. This is our opportunity to show how much bigger this is than the brokenness in our life. So <laughs> this is crazy. But uh, so I didn't grow up with my father in my life. And um, it was maybe about a year a year or so ago that God asked me, hey, Laura, I want you to, uh, I want you to go pursue your dad. I want you to go pursue your dad and show him the love that I showed you, right? I want you to go pursue your dad, and, and he just talked about this, and forgive your dad, right? Um, if you weren't in that service, it's awesome. You got to hear it, but it's about true forgiveness, um, and it's a process, and I heard God say this. He whispered it to me, and I'm like, God, you're talking to me? Like, why don't you talk to my older sister and my little sister? Like, I don't want to go pursue my dad. My dad's back home in Texas, and so I had to take this drive back home after a year. Like, I didn't obey right away, you know? It was a process for me to say, all right, God, like, I hear you clearly. I'm going to go pursue my dad. I'm going to go show him the love that you showed me. I'm going to go forgive him. And um, it took me about a year to do it. Um, but I, uh, I, drove, I drove to Texas, and I... Um, remember delaying it to like the last day almost, <laughs> you know, I'm about to come back. I'm like, all right, I got to do this. I got to do this. Um, and so I drove, I drove to his house and, you know, we're a big family. And so like my aunts and uncles were there and the kids and my cousin were there. And I'm like, oh man, like, I wish this was different. I wish it was just him alone. Like I envision like, it's going to be the serious talk. We're going to sit on the couch. I'm going to like cry my heart out to him and everything that he did. And I'm just going to tell him, you know what? I love you. Um, but it didn't turn out that way. It was like a big party at his house. And like, I literally sat outside of the house for like 20 minutes, like sobbing in my car. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. I was paralyzed with fear. I could not get out of my car. I was, I was, I was just scared of like the what ifs or like what is he gonna say or how is this gonna go? And, and I sat in my car and I listened to uh, Hillsong's Prince of Peace. And I just felt God's peace overwhelm me, right? And, and cover me. And I got out of my car and 
you know, I, I said hi to everybody, and um, there's a moment when we're, we're getting ready to, to clean up and wrap up, and everyone's leaving. My dad goes into the house um, alone. I'm like, oh, okay, this is my opportunity. I'm going to go talk to him. And so I follow him in, and um, I'm like, hey, Dad, I just, I just want to talk to you real quick. He's like, yeah, what's up? And throughout the, throughout the day, I was asking him, like, hey, like, what did you want to be when you grow up? Like, you know, just like silly questions. What's your favorite color? Like, I don't know. Like, all these questions that I didn't know about my dad, I was just asking him, like, I just want to get to know you. And so I asked him in the house, like, you know, I was asking all these questions because I, I truly want to get to know you. I want to build a relationship with you. And I forgive you. And I love you for everything that you did or didn't do. I love you. Because God loves me, I know that I can love you. Right? And he started crying, and he's like, you know what? Like, and he shared his, his side of the story of what all the struggles that he faced and like wanting to come back into our lives and everything. Um, but I knew that in that moment I planted seeds because I obeyed God, right? I obeyed God, and I knew that God completely healed and restored my heart, that I <laughs> can go and, and do that for my father, right? Amen, amen, amen. So, <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says this. We're going to wrap up right here. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Honor your father and mother. It is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it. Namely, so you will live well and have a long life. So honor your father and mother so you will live well and have a long life. So I looked up the word well, and well, to live well, means to live good, to live rightly, to live fully, to live freely, right? Honor your father and mother so you will live good, so you can live fully. I mean, who doesn't want that kind of life, right? Who doesn't want that kind of life? I want to live fully. I want to live freely. For our father to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. That's Matthew 25, 23. I'll show you a picture real quick. That's me and my dad. And I'm cheesing, and it's kind of like an awkward side hug, right? But uh, <laughs> that's me and my dad. This is going to be us and our Heavenly Father, y'all. Amen. Amen. I hope Jesus has a Harley Davidson shirt on, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to get into some table discussions. Um, there's a couple questions on your sheets there, and then we'll wrap up as a group. I love that y'all having some good conversations. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed that message. I hope that I hope that First John three one through three spoke to you in, in knowing that we truly are children of God, right? That we can look at our Father and say, "Yes, you are my Father, right? You are my heavenly Father." Um, just to recap the the four points, we we get a new identity in God, right? We get a new identity. We can see our our heavenly Father as a perfect Father. We have the power to reverse this curse on our lives and not to live in our brokenness. And point number four, we can show the world how powerful the gospel is. Amen. Um, people don't want to know what we believe. They don't want to just know it, right? They want to see it in action. They want to see it and they, they, want, to, they want to be like, how, how did you do that? How did you go and pursue your dad? How did you go and forgive him? How did you go and, and love him and pursue him the way that God did? You can say, because of God in me, right? Because of Jesus in me. They're going to be like, I want to know Jesus. It's like, I need some of that in my life, right? I want to go restore my relationship with my father, with my mother, or whoever it is that you were raised by, right? Maybe a friend and just forgiving somebody, just like the message in there said, you know? It's the first step. It's the first step. Um. So what, what stood out to you guys? Let's recap some of the questions on there. What stood out to you guys about the message? Just go. Heartfelt real life story. 
Thank you, Jim. Just a reminder that our parents are not perfect like us. We're not perfect. Right. They need to break Yes. Yes, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, they're not perfect. They have a past, right? They have a childhood. They have a story of their own. And we just got to love them the way God loves us because we're imperfect. And it kind of recaps to, to the first week, right, of how God dispensed grace and mercy on us with a shovel, the shovel and not a spoon, and how we love ourselves, right, that God loves us, that we can love ourselves so we can love others better. Anybody else? Kind of thing on reversing the curse, um, just not carrying it forward to the, the next generation. Um, I was telling the group, and my, my dad was pretty distant <clears throat> growing up, and uh, it's probably how I also view God as well as kind of the distant, you know, you know, you know uh, uh, father. And even though I, <clears throat> you know, my father and my, and my mom both sacrificed quite a bit for me, you know, and I do the same for, for my children, I still see the distance that I'm creating between myself and my children, and having to try to break that, because if it doesn't make me free, it won't make them free, right. and you know, that's kind of the last thing, <clears throat> when you mentioned about what is living well for you when you said freely, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, can, I can see how that's, that's it. Um, I'm not going to call out the questions. I don't want to, I don't want, I mean, could you say you've had or have daddy issues? I don't want to count on <laughs> any of you guys to share that if you want to, but how is God a different kind of father for you? Um, share a moment where you realize you had a new identity in God. Anybody want to go ahead? Sure. Um, when me and my dad, after like going through so much, uh, crap, it was just funny because I shook his hand when I was like maybe 11, 12 years old at church. And he's like, could you just skip your teenage years? And I was like, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, my brother, he's four and a half years older than the day than me. And he gave my dad hell. Mm -hmm. And then I gave my dad, like, I don't know if it's like a younger brother syndrome where you got to make it that much worse or you got to like <laughs> overdo or overstep your, you know, your, your brother, but that's what I did. And I gave my, my pops this uh, a crap ton of grief, and uh, we worked through it, we patched things up. Um, as a result, we ended up traveling to Israel, and I remember we were standing in front of this famous gate on his footsteps, and I actually have it as like a computer background, um, where we're just like, you know, kind of hanging on to each other, hanging out, and it's, it's just really cool to think like, had I stayed where I was at, had I not trusted God to work on this, I would have been back in like Arizona, just like weeping, miserable, financially distant, emotionally devastated. And it's like, because I allowed that just to take place, I'm now halfway around the world with the man that helped in assistance with God and my mom, conceived me, like really crazy. And that's, that's just crazy, mind blowing to think about. Yeah. I mean, they gave us life. We have to thank them for that, right? <laughs> Anybody else want to answer any of those questions on there? What does it mean to honor your father and mother? What does living well look like for you? Go ahead. So on the, the honor one, I think for those of us who have had good parental situations, it's uh, one of the things that I thought, have thought about a lot recently was that I, I don't want to take them for granted. It's so easy on the, on the flip side, you know, they're always there, they're always at the other end of the phone, any time of day, you reach that kind of thing, and you've got that kind of relationship. It's so easy just to, to leave that there and to, to not call, not check in, not care about what's going on in their life because they're good, you're good, I only need them when I need them, you know, and I know they're going to be there for me. It's very self, self-oriented, self self-centric. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I talk to my parents weekly at this point in my life. And so I, I realize that when I call, sometimes I'm just like downloading my whole life to them for you know, a, a while, I don't want to say how long, but <laughs> 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 apparently I like to talk about myself, and I get to the end of the conversation, I'm like, I never asked them about, what are they doing, what's that doctor's appointment about, like, what's going on in your life, like, how can I pray for you this week, like, I just, sadly, I don't care, right, yeah. it's all been about me mm -hmm, yeah. in that moment, and so it's been really convicting, like, oh my gosh, like, the honor that I need to be giving them is, like, is to have a relationship. And a relationship isn't one-sided. It's not 
them loving me and me taking it all in, it's me loving them back. And so that's one thing that I, I don't want to lose in, in adulthood, is being able to show the love now as an adult, um, choosing to do that intentionally. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So. Go ahead. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of on the flip side of what Seth was saying, fellow us brought up at the table that sometimes honoring our parents uh, means honoring them even if they didn't deserve it. Like right. when some of us uh, had maybe more issues with our parents. Mm -hmm. And um, just a personal story, kind of relating to yours, like mine and my relationship. But my stepfather, who was the one who raised me, was just not healthy. Um, and we kind of patch things up, but it's easier to patch things up with someone who's distant, like physically not here, they're in another state. Yeah. Um, so when I had my boys and he wanted to come visit, that was really like, I kind of froze up when he asked through a text message, fortunately. <laughs> um, and Alan was like, are you sure? Because of all of the stuff from growing up. But I just realized I didn't want to hold on to that, that garbage anymore. Yeah. And so even though that relationship is still by no means perfect, for me, it felt like I could still honor him mm -hmm. as a grandfather, not my kids. But I, he definitely isn't the man who was. Justin doesn't want to be that person. But yeah, so sometimes <laughs> kind of going above and beyond and having that spiritual maturity. Yeah. yeah. Alex? Oh, yeah. Um, hopefully, he doesn't sound corny, but it's something I came up with just to kind of understand who God is. It's on the number three where it says, Show a moment you realize you had a new identity in God. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I wanted a relationship with God. I wanted it to be personal, and I wanted to know every time I'm saying this, it's going straight to God. So I tried to assign God something that was so, you know, like giving him a present, like, God, this is who I think you are. And I do numbers a lot. So uh, first I gave him number one, thinking that, you know, one is the best number you could give someone, you know, number one usually. But I never thought about zero. So I said, I'm going to give God zero because the number zero is absolute. Like, you can't. It's unchangeable, and if you put it... Geometry. If you put it to your left side of any number, the number stays the same. Kind of like God. He's always there, but you don't see him. He's always there. But if you put him to the right, if you put zero to the right, it changes the number. So if you start using God, it starts changing your life. So for me personally, that, you know, kind of, that's the number I assigned to him. And it's about three weeks ago, and my life has been, like, crazy, you know. I interact with people where I go, but it's just... I like numbers, so I, I have to use what I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm so, like, yeah. no. <laughs> 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 You're like, oh, you're able to make this relationship work right, right. with God, right? I'm there, but I don't see him, and I'm still me. And then when I start applying him, I start multiplying. Like, one now becomes ten. ten. Another one is a hundred. It can go on forever, you know? Forever. Yeah, so that's just five. Luis, are you going to say something? Yeah, so I mean, uh, just to piggyback off what you said, uh, it's not taking. It's not taking the parents for that. It's not. Right. It's it's not forgetting about the little things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also just offering forgiveness because just like you said, our parents are not perfect. They had a past. Um, I wish I could have a time where I could physically talk to my father. He's no longer here. Mm -hmm. But it's just offering that. It's, it's offering that forgiveness to not only you know, free the person who's no longer here, but it's also free. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to challenge you guys to start your journey, right? Start your journey on, on any of those four points that were shared today in, you know, one, on taking on your new identity in God, right? As a, as a son or daughter of the king. Two, to start to see God as a perfect father, right? He's a perfection. Reversing the curse in your life and or showing the world how powerful the gospel is because the, the gospel is powerful enough to reconcile us to God, to ourselves, and to bring healing into our relationship with our parents. So I want to challenge you guys right now. Just maybe, just maybe pull out your phones. Pull out your phones right now. And text your mama or your daddy. Text them. Tell them, hey, I love you. Just send them a sweet message. You know, whoever it is in your life, your uncle, your grandma, whoever God is nudging you to text right now, tell them I love you. And hey guys, we're doing a devotional this week. It's starting on the 9th and it's on the good, good father. 
because our Father is so, so good. And then next week, we're not meeting here next week. It's Easter. So sign up to serve if you're available to serve. Um, celebrate God's resurrection. Amen. Um, the following week, we'll be doing the 10 R's of relationships. Um, so the devotionals are on our meetup page or on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page. You can see them everywhere. Um, but get into them. They're awesome. Um, I want to close this out in prayer. <sighs> Jesus, 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 I love you so much. Lord, you, you truly are our Prince of Peace, our Almighty King. You are um, El Roy. You are Abba. You are Abba, our Father, our Papa, Lord. I just, I love that this series is just teaching us how we can relate to you as God, our Father, how we can relate to ourselves and love ourselves because you love us and we can see ourselves the way that you see us, Lord. And we now have the opportunity just to build up this new identity within ourselves to be a child of God, to be a child of you, Father. I just, I love that you, um, you left this week open for me to touch on because it is so relatable, Lord. And I just pray that, um, I pray that the words that were spoken today were just to soften our hearts, Lord, to, to see that um, you can bring healing, you can bring deliverance from our past, from, our, from, from fear, from these chains, from shame, from whatever it is that's holding us back to living a full and free life, Lord. May we move on this week, Lord, to, 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 see, you, to, to see you in a new way, to see you in a new way, to reverse this curse and to, to see you as God, the perfect, perfect Father, the good, good Father. May we just honor you as our Father, our Heavenly Father. May we honor our mothers and our fathers so that way we can live of a free life, Lord. Um, I thank you so much for everybody that's in this room today. Um, I thank you for their just encouragement, their prayers, just for this community, Lord. Thank you so much for blessing us with this awesome space, with this, with these people, um, and just with the love, the loving kindness that you have for us, your, your little lambs, your sheep. <laughs> um, I love you so much, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen.